Hello there. My name is Salim Javed and I am an assistant professor at the Faculty of Mass Communication and Media Technology at SGT University. As you know by now that we are producing a series of videos which will help you understand some of the basic concepts and facts about cinema. If you have been following the series, you must know that we have covered topics like how cinema came into existence, how it all started from uh, uh, Etienne Jules Murray experiment, uh, uh, then we have Edison, uh, William Kennedy, Laurie Dixon and Lumiere Brothers, how Marius Cesare came to India and how we Indians got exposed to cinema and how we started making our own films. We, start, we saw first, we saw their films first and then started making by 1930. We started making our own film Raja Harishchand by 1931. We started talkies in India, Alamara. And then we have cinema before independence and golden age of cinema started after independence 1950s, 60s. Then we, in the last video we talked about 1917, 1970s and in this video we will talk about 1980s. This is an era where, you know, most of the people, not even academician would like to talk about. They simply, you, you know, sweep it under the carpet and just call it low point of Hindi cinema, worst period of Hindi cinema, the era of strange paradox, a period of stagnation. But why do they call it? What went wrong or was there something actually wrong with 1980s or it is simply neglected? We have to find out during the course of this lecture that is it really right to call a decade like low point of Hindi cinema, worst period of Hindi cinema or st strange paradox or period of stagnation? So what kind of films were making in 1980s? What was going on in 1980s? Why people distanced themselves from cinema hall and things like that? To understand all this, you know, I, I must admit that this is one of the toughest lecture that it, it took me quite a while to prepare this for this lecture because much, you know, good quality of uh, research and material is not available uh, on this era. People talk about pre, uh, you know, post liberalization and everything, and then people start talking about Indian diaspora 90s that I'm talking about. But when it comes to 1980s, majority of the good books have mentioned it just as a passing reference. But today in this lecture, we will dig more deep into what was going in 1980s and why if all these allegations that I have just said, are they true or they are not true? What was the socio-political atmosphere behind these films? Why if we were receiving these kind of films, what was the reason? Let's start it. Now, to understand 1980s, I always uh, say that you really have to see the films that were made in in this particular era. Without seeing and just listen, uh, you know, listening to some videos and uh, reading some books and then you form your own opinion uh, is not, uh, you know, a wise thing to do. You will uh, get to see some very interesting facts about 1980s in this video, some very uh, uh, funny titles and uh, what goes into it, why they were like it. Now, let's pick up 1980s. Uh, like in 1980s, the film, the, those who did well, were films like Kurbani, which was directed by Feroz Khan, Asha, which was made by J. Om Prakash, uh, Ali Baba Chalish Chor, Insaf Ka Tarazu, Dostana, and films like uh, Jyoti uh, Bani Jwala, you know, that's uh, quite interesting name, Ram Balram, uh, Mang Bharo Sajna, you may find it like it's, it's very tacky kind of a statement in today's term, Achal, Bandish, all these kind of films. Now, these are, by the way, these, the, I have chosen these 10 films because these 10 films are the one which did maximum business during that time. So that's the only reason and some of you may, ha may have seen these films like Kurbani is very stylized, uh, westernized 
but an Indian film which is uh, uh, made by Feroz Khan. If you happen to see this film, you must see this film. It is like a uh, full entertainer. Now, you may say, we never heard about Asha. Uh, I mean, what kind of a film? And it's the second highest grossing film of year 1980. Now, when we talk about Asha, I'm sure that you must have heard a song, Shisha Ho Ya Dil Ho Aake Toot Jata Hai, or uh, songs like... Uh, जाने हम सड़क के लोगों से महलों वाले क्यों डरते हैं ऑल दीज लाइक सॉन्ग्स इम लाइक यू कान गेट अवे फ्रॉम दोज सॉन्ग्स देन यू हैव अली बाबा चालीस चोर यू नो द सेम स्टोरी बट मेड इन अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग मैन ना बी आर चो बड़ा एक्चुअली मेड अ फिल्म कॉल्ड इन साफ का तराजू इफ यू हैव नॉट सीन दिस फिल्म आई रिकमेंड दैट सम ऑफ यू मस्ट सी दिस फिल्म बिकॉज what was going on in 1980s you know some of of the blame uh, is that uh, very absurd theme like rape is commercialized so but you must see this film and uh, you will find it uh, you know in, uh, in entertaining but disturbing also dostana obviously it was ras khosla and things like that now all these things when i'm talking about 1980s what you can see on or on your screen also you may have seen or you may not have seen these films now there are something very interesting was going on in the era of 1980s on the one hand we have like jyoti bani jwala kind of a film but on the other hand we have films like khubsurat by rishikesh mukherjee or uh, films like curse like you most of us may, uh, may have seen this film curse but that was not the highest uh, uh, grossing film of year 1980s but today we see khubsurat and there are remakes also uh, and uh, but when you see khubsurat then you realize that it is such a simple film but it it hits you so well you know it is like not like uh, uh, absolutely high class melodramatic though uh, khubsurat has dekha in it but it is like very subtle it depends on the director what kind of of, of a director you are working with so like uh, rekha also did kon bhari mang so on in that particular film you have a different kind of a, a projection by the actress but when you see khubsurat she is young bubbly uh, a chatterbox she gets into a family and this is how she you know start making things fall in place and things like that and curse is like absolutely a indian theme reincarnation something goes wrong in one life then he 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 is born again and then he revenge the what was done wrong to him now year 1981 saw so the highest grossing film of year 1981 was kranti uh directed by manoj kumar a beautiful film large scale film it's a it's it's a big production then you have films like lavares kudrat meri awaaz suno ek dooje ke liye love story then you have katilo ke katil you know these are uh, very striking kind of names about 80s film like katilo ke katil or khatro ke khiladi uh, kind of names then you have naseeb dhanwan yarana now what is interesting about these films is these are on the one hand you have films like kranti which is out and out 100% large scale commercial film you have lavaris again a uh, uh, a class but very entertaining and then there is a very silent entry in this category called ek dooje ke liye uh, which was which was directed by k balachandran now what is so interesting about this film Uh, the, the the very interesting thing about uh, this film is that the actor not in the actor but the character is from south girl is from punjabi background and they come together and fall in love this is very usual kind of a thing but the background made made it very interesting and what was very interesting here was the ending of this film which was later on picked up by um, qiyamat se qiyamat tak also so so this was a very shocking kind of uh, of an end where uh, i mean you you should see the film i should not tell you the end but it had a very shocking shocking end now this was the year when kumar gaurav uh, was uh, introduced to the mainstream and uh, uh, rocky which has sanjay dutt in it uh, also came 
then you have Tino Anand's Kalia also. Most of us may have seen all these films. Now, year 1982 has uh, the highest grossing film was Vidhata, which was directed by Subhash Gai. Then you have Prem Rog, which was directed by legendary Raj Kapoor. You have Namak Halal, Farz or Kanun, Khuddar, Nikah, again B.R. Chopra, Nikah. If you remember, I talked about B.R. Chopra when we were uh, talking about uh, the, uh, the, this uh, Insaf Ka Tarazu. So after Insaf Ka Tarazu, he came up with uh, this film called Nikah. I, I tell you a very interesting anecdote about Nikah. Uh, I am sure that those who are, or are of uh, my age, they have seen how VHS were rented and how television was uh, rented and people used to pay money up front to the parlor, VCR, VHS parlors and used to bring three films and the whole night, I mean everybody was there in the watching film and it was mandatory to finish three films and in majority of the cases where I was li uh, living uh, in my childhood, Nika was one of the favorite films. It was uh, directed by B.R. Chopra. Then you have another very interesting film, Disco Dancer in, in year 1982. This is a film actually which changed the course of music for the entire 80s and for 90s also. And it's a cult classic. Bappi Lehri was the music director of this film. And this film, very interesting fact about this film is that this film was not only a hit in India, it was a grand success in Russia. So uh, Mithun became an international star with this film. And what you see, uh, many films following of Mithun, there was a, a bond between Mithun and Bappi Lehri. And they were making, you know, they were not making, they were churning out films after films. And it is a landmark film, Disco Dancer, year 1982. Then you have Dharam Kata, which was uh, directed by Sultan Ahmed. Uh, then you have Ashanti, Satya Pe Satya. I'm sure you must have seen Satya Pe Satya. I mean, it is being telecasted now on, on television. It's, it's a story of uh, seven brothers. You know, they are like, uh, they're living very, uh, in a very uncivilized way, but then elder brothers fall in love with a girl, she comes and then she, she, she fine tunes all these six brothers and things like that. Then you have Angur also and Nadia Ke Paar also in the same year. Now you must be wondering that on the one hand I am talking about extremely commercial film and on the other hand I am talking about uh, you know uh, which is close to parallel cinema or so called art cinema or you know uh, a sensible cinema and all these like for Angur uh, for that matter which was which is directed by Gulzar. If you know about Shakespeare's Comedy of Errors you, you, you know, you read it and you watch Angur and you will fall in love with both. It is such interesting where, are, where in the story in Angur, there are uh, two identical brothers, you, you know, one, two pairs of identical brothers and the situation that arises uh, because uh, when they are adult and when they meet and, and, and the kind of situation it, uh, it germinates you know, that is absolutely funny. There is a wonderful scene I still remember. I was very young when I saw this film. And uh, so one person is very worried and he goes to a shop and says, Mujhe rassi de do. You know, then something happens and he, he, he goes away from there. Then the other person, uh, the dupe langer comes and he says, Ye li je bhai sab rassi. To wo lagi, maine kab rassi maangi. You know, it may sound very simple, but when you see it in the film, so it's it's hilarious. It's very sensible. It's mild. It's not like uh, um, you know, um, dharam kata. Uh, it's 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 absolutely that you would love. You sit back, you watch, and you enjoy. And then you have Nadia Kepar, which is uh, Govind Monis, and later on this film was there is a remake in nineties. You know, Hum Aapke Hai Kaun and you know, these, this is how 80s, you may say anything to 80s, but it has, it, it laid foundation for all the developments that we are about to witness in 90s and some of the trends which, you know, exhibited itself in, in, in 2000 and post 2000. Now, if you talk about year 1983, uh, you know, you may laugh about it, but Himmatwala was uh, 
absolutely absolutely the top grossing film of of uh, that year then you have kuli one of my favorite directors i call him magician manmohan desai uh, he 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 directed it with uh, uh, priyagraj and uh, during the shoot of kuli he was heard and uh, amitabh bachchan was heard and you know it was a sensation people lined up prayed and uh, he got all right and he came but kuli was a huge success you know amitabh bachchan was still rolling then you have very funny title sautan uh, i can assure you if you want to cry watch this film then you have avatar very sensible film very though it is absolutely commercial film but very sensible film it's not avatar you know james cameron it's avatar hindi avatar so they have avatar we have avatar so very sensible film then you have the entry of jackie shroff directed by, by subhash gai hero and it has some of the most memorable tracks and then you have uh, uh, agar tum na hote uh, was the another film then you have justice choudhary betab uh, sunny deol betab then you have mawali which was directed uh, by k uh bapa then you have uh, nokar bivi ka which is uh, directed by rajkumar kohli now at the same time so where we have films like uh, himmat wala you know you must see this i i i tell you you will be thoroughly entertained and things like that you have kuli avatar but on the other hand you have very sensible cinema masoom wo saat din aur jaane bhi do yaar if you have not seen these three films trust me you have not seen anything uh, any 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 film of 80s masoom will make you fall in love directed by shekhar kapoor uh, very sensible cinema and he is the man who who later in few years will be directing mr india also i i call it the first sci-fi film of india wo saat din uh, anil kapoor's entry and simple rustic uh, very very smoothly conveyed plot and jaane bhi do yaar kundan shah it is something which is landmark if you talk about comedy comedy is rare i must tell you it's rare in india a good comedy is rare in india and jaane bhi do yaar if i may say so is at the pinnacle of its genre then i may not be wrong who is not there in that film and what kind of brilliant situations they have opted and brilliant improvisation jaane bhi do yaar is a must watch made by kundan shah vidu vinod chopra which you know later on directs parinda was part of this project and i mean there are like if i start talking about the stories related to jaane bhi do yaar it it can consume the entire lecture then by 1984 if you have himmat wala topping the chart uh, dharmendra shri devi combo then here in 1984 you have again the same uh, uh, you know couple again topping the chart like tofa so all this you know in in when especially in uh, 2010 to 2020 when you have remakes and when they want to you know uh, recreate 1980s so they go to himmat wala and tofa doesn't matter whether you like it or you don't like it but it is there so tofa again tops the chart in 1984 then you have maqsad you have sharabi beautiful songs be- good story and prakash mehra another magician another magician who i, I mean these these people like prakash mehra uh, and uh, you have uh, uh, similar directors that i just talked about they were churning successful films after films and i will tell you when we will be discussing during the lecture i'll tell you that it was not so simple doing all these things in 1980s when you understand when you understand the social political background of of 1980s then you realize that coming up films like uh, all these kind of films then you have um, you know dharma kanun raj tilak a huge production naya kadam then you have uh, now this is something very interesting uh, kasam paida karne wale ki if you have seen uh, gangs of wasipur there is a wonderful scene which uses the same track from the film and it is like uh, as if uh, uh, though you are paying tribute but you are also making 
your young generation aware of what was going on and what kind of a cinema creators have seen look you may love it you may abhor it you may dislike it you may you may have your reservation but every period had has has got its own uh, style of filmmaking like suppose if you say that uh, 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 pakiza is a brilliant film or you say that uh, uh, mughlai azam is a brilliant film but you also have films which are not so good even uh, of, of even in that time so when you you know make cinema uh, when or or when you see films of a particular age you really have to understand the sensibility of people you know there was a beautiful argument whether society is the reflection of films or film is the reflection of society a uh, lot of people have argued a lot on this but i say it's a very circular kind of an argument there is no point saying that who is driving from where we drive like cinema or or, or life drives from each other so any product any film is a product of its own time now suppose if somebody wants to revisit 1980s in his or her own film when she or he is making uh, you know they go to references like these because these are the references which is clinging in the mind of people even now then you have jeene nahi dunga you have aawaz you have a beautiful soni mahiwal which which is at the at the 10th position in the list which is uh, uh, which is basically directed by two people and uh, it's it's a beautiful film now all these films that that i'm talking about like soni mahiwal or you have sharabi you know there is a underline which is going on good music entertainment big stars on the other hand you have sensible cinema simple stories you know so we you know you and i cannot imagine that uh, uh, films like uh, dev d which you must have seen or uh, or 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 other experimental films like the girl in the yellow boot or all the uh, bombay noir that we uh, we we say film noir the uh, and then the bombay noir uh, all all these things you know all these films were facilitating indirectly for these films they were clearing the ground that you know people should come and make these kind of cinema then if you talk about 1985 then we have films like um, ram teri ganga meli which is again directed by legendary raj kapoor pyar jhukta nahi beautiful songs then you have mard uh, manmohan De- desai again legend director he, he is a legendary director prakash mehra manmohan desai they are you know the magician of commercial cinema you know a uh, lot of people are doing research on manmohan desai and prakash mehra and finding out like like there is still an argument in academic world that when people say is there any re- is 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 there any formula for film success you know that is one of the opening lines that i have written uh, in my uh, i'm writing in a, a book so that is one of the first lines is there any formula for film success i don't know whether manmohan desai or prakash mehra knew it but they were repeating it again and again do uh, by 80s manmohan uh, desai and prakash mehra they were uh, fading out but uh, then you have you know then hum dono bewafai uh, you have meri jang i tell you if uh, this film uh, subhash uh, made by subhash gai meri jang and uh, akrosh these two films so one film belongs to uh, uh, new wave kind of a style and this is pure commercial when you see akrosh there is a lawyer who has got his first case uh, not exactly as a favor but he is an apprentice to his father's disciple and then you have this you have uh, uh, nashuddin shah, shah and uh, uh, ompuri there and here you have anil kapoor and om puri uh, not om puri sorry amrish puri then you here you have look the, watch these two films one after another and you will understand that how sensibility changes with the format 
with the audience, with the budget. Watch these two films back to back, Akrosh and Meri Jung. You know, uh, only four, four years difference. But you, the plot more or less is same. Theme is more or less same. Obviously, there you have to, you, you are fighting for a, a, a scheduled tribe person who has committed a crime. And what a beautiful film that even a lawyer actually, uh, I mean, that humanizes lawyer. When he is on his first case, even he, he is scared. He goes, he is shaken, he is as, you know, vulnerable as we are. Not like Mary Jung lawyer where they are untouchable. And they have every facility available for them and, and things like that. Then you have other films like Arjun, you have Gulami, beautiful film Gulami by J.P. Datta. Then you have Babu, then you have Hoshiar. And there is a very interesting film in this year called Saga. Now, I have only just covered four, of, I have just covered five years. And, you know, uh, when we talk about 80s, you know, th there is so much to talk about. There is so much to... To understand, like suppose how piracy has affected 80s films, how higher income tax uh, has affected uh, film, how underworld has affected uh, 80s films, why we were have very uh, very strange kind of titles and things like that. Uh, so, so that is all in this video. In the next uh, video, we will be explaining more about 19. 80s films. Thank you very much.